Hey guys, my name is Ismaus and in this video we'll be learning Photoshop in one video. Uh, but before we start, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe as a way to support the channel. So in this video I'll be using Photoshop CC but the basics I'll be showing you here are, you, are applicable in any version of Photoshop you might be using. So to check the version of Photoshop you're using, just go under help and you should see a link to about Photoshop. So when you click on it, it will open up this box where it shows you the version of Photoshop you're using and the release date. So my name my photoshop cc was released in 2015 but as i said before the steps i'll be showing you here are applicable to any version of photoshop you might be having so to open up a new project go under file and click the new button or the new link and you will have this or this box pop up so the first thing you can do is create uh give your project a name so i'll call this project one Let's make sure this thing is recording. So that's good. Uh, then from document type, you have a bunch of templates you can select, you can choose from. You have the Photoshop default size, uh, which gives you a width of seven inches and five uh, and a height of five inches, but you can change that to pixels. So to change that from inches to pixels, just click on this drop down list and you should get a list of different dimensions to choose from. So we have pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, peaks, pickers and columns so i usually go with pixels because that's uh the most standard people use so i'll just go to that so the default photoshop size gives us a 200 a 2100 pixels by a 1500 pixels uh, the default resol resolution or dpi is 72 but i usually set mine to th to 300 dpi and uh, you should if you're also uh printing if you're going to print your document so but the default is 72 the other things here you can change from color mode the color mode from rgb to bitmap grayscale rgb C cmyk lab color and uh, everything else you can also change from 8 bit 16 bit to 32 bit but uh, the default works which is 8 bit uh, the background you mean you can leave it at white uh, because you can change this uh, anytime you want and uh, the advanced part we won't look at that after getting the settings you want just click on ok and you will have this window opening up it's taking a while i'm not sure why but let's wait so after that after clicking ok you will have this window opening up and it's where your work it's your workspace and uh, uh maybe i forgot to mention that uh uh, Photoshop has different workspaces so currently we are in the essentials workspace but if you want to change to a different workspace you can go under window workspace and you will see a list of different workspaces you can choose from uh, the thing about workspaces is simply a way Photoshop lays out different panels uh, so currently in the essentials you have the tools panel laid out to the left of your win of your screen and you have these other panels like the layers channels path uh, laid out or positioned to the right of your screen but if you change from work from the essentials workspace to the motion workspace you see that you get different sets of panels and uh, you can change between different workspaces again by going under window workspace and selecting the workspace you want and you can see every workspace you choose gives you different panels so you can see i ca this is not how usually the photograph workspace looks but i customized it so if you want to reset it to the default setting you can go under windows workspace workspace reset photography and so this is the default layout for the photography uh workspace so if you want to customize it like the way i had i say you want the the navigate the histogram to the left so it, again if you so if you want to move any panel to anywhere to any side of your screen you can move it you can just drag it drag the, the name of the panel and position it anywhere you want if you want to if you want to stick it to the ends of the screen you have th three ends you can you can you can pin your panels you can pin it to the left you can pin it to the bottom you can pin it to the right as well but you can't pin it at the top so to pin it to the left you can move it until you see this blue highlight and release so let's move this to the bottom move it until you see that blue highlight and then release uh, so you can also move this to the right until you see the blue highlight 
and then you, that's it so if if i wanted to save this workspace you can uh if you wanted to save this workspace you can go and under window workspace and create a new workspace you can name it what you want i'll call this uh just random random workspace and then save so now if i go under window workspace you can see now that is listed as well in the workspaces uh, if i want to delete it the first thing you should do when you do you want to delete in workspace say i want to delete this workspace make sure to change from the from the current workspace to a different workspace uh, so if i want to delete this workspace which is the random workspace and you can see it from the end of the from the right top corner of your window and this also gives you a short a shortcut to the list of workspaces so i can also change to the different workspaces from here so again if you want to change to delete say this workspace i just created the random workspace i need to make sure that i'm in a different workspace and then go under window or just go to this list and you should see an option to delete that workspace so you can see uh, before you delete make sure you have the right workspace selected and then hit delete otherwise you might delete a workspace you didn't want to delete uh, so again uh, let's see let's see let's see so as you, as you saw each workspace is just a set of different panels and but if you want a list of all panels you can get them under window and they are all listed here so you can see color uh, is here and every panel that is uh, maximized or viewable in the workspace will be checked in the list of panels here so if i want the properties panel i can just click on it and it's open it opens here um, if i uncheck it you can see it's sitting now uh, sometimes it just gets it it simply gets minimized to this panel here so you can see yeah so if you're wondering where your panels are they can sometimes be minimized to this area so let's go and create and let's see how to import an image in photoshop so let's close out of this and uh, so the simplest way to import an image in photoshop is by going to that image the image you want to import yes and then dragging it into the workspace the working area so it will load a new document with the same dimensions as your image and uh, so when you create a new project you will see a layers panel opened up and it will be active and your image will be set as a background layer but by default it will come as a locked layer so to unlock it you can double click on the layer and the un and it will get unlocked so now you can do things like paint on it and okay so to paint on it you just select under these tools you can see this brush tool uh, if you right click anywhere while selecting the brush tool you can you can open up the brush settings so i have the size to be as too big so i to reduce the size of the brush i can just drag this size uh slider to change the size of my brush uh, to undo just hit ctrl z or, uh, or go under edit and you should see redo brush tool uh, so you can also change the color of your brush by selecting as uh, this color from this color palette so so to change this is the foreground color to change to the background color uh, you can double click you can click on this to bring out the color palette for that and now to switch from the front foreground color to the background color you can either click on this this icon here or you can use x to change between you can hold down you can click on x on your keyboard to change between the foreground and background color so undo again use ctrl z but using ctrl z just gives you one step of undo but to do multiple undos you can hold down ctrl alt z and then you will be able to do multiple undos so again let's unlock this layer again uh, and look at some of the tools here in the tools panel so the first tool we see in the tools panel is the move tool so you, if you move if you select it and select the layer you can move it around by dragging 
and uh, each each icon you see in the tools panel that that has a triangle at the bottom uh means that it has more than one tool under it inside it so if you right click on that tool you will get uh, different options for that so we got an artboard as this call let's see let's see if you hover over uh, the the tool you should see the name of the tool so this is the artboard tool and i rarely use it so uh, just undo and so to get back to the image uh so as i said any any icon you see any tool you see that has a triangle in the right bottom corner of that of that icon means that it has multiple tools inside it so if i right click on this select tool you can see i have different options for the select tool we have the rectangular marquee tool so if i drag around you can make a rectangular selection to make a perfect square selection you can hold down shift and drag uh, you see you can make that's that way you can make a square selection uh if you make a selection on any layer that is not locked and say we make the selection and we select a move to you will move part of that image so let's undo but if you have a selection and select a move tool you will be simply moving that selection to a different place uh, under that we have this elliptical marquee tool which simply draws circular selections uh, you can see i can draw an oval selection but if i want to draw a perfect circle circle selection just hold down shift and you will have a uniform selection under it we have a single row selection this simply select a row of pixels and uh, we also have a vertical selection under that we have the lasso tools uh, we have the lasso tool polygon lasso and the magnetic lasso the lasso tool is simply a freehand tool that you can use to draw selections using free hands so i have made the selection again i can use the move tool to move that selection or select a move a selection tool to move that selection just the selection this move tool moves uh, the selected area of the image but when you select the any selection tool it simply selects moves the selection in uh, just move the selections so from the lasso tool we have the polygon lasso this simply creates a polygon selection and the way it works is you select a starting point and then you start to select different points of an image so you can move zoom in by holding down alt on your keyboard and using this middle mouse wheel another way you can use this uh, this zoom in tool to zoom in if i hold down out you can see the zoom icon changes from a plus to a negative and then i can zoom out if i release it changes to a positive and then i can move out or you can simply use the options up here so this is zoom out this is zoom in fit to screen fit full screen yep so that's the selection tools uh we have the magnetic lasso which is also um, a selection tool the way it works is just you select a starting point and then move around the different edges without clicking or, or dragging anything uh, photoshop will snap your selection to different areas of high contrast and uh, as you can see so i'm not doing anything but drag but moving my cursor and then photoshop makes the selections based on the contrast C of that area after you can simply double click and your selection will be confirmed again you can move that select that selection or you can move the area of that image selected uh, from there we have the magic one which is also a selection tool you can use it to select different areas you just select the the one and then click an area of the same so photoshop will select pixels of the same color that match the area selected uh, if you want to select all the pixels that share the same color 
the same color range you can select uh from up here you have different options you can select you can uncheck continuous so photoshop will will select different areas that have you see i selected uh the cloud which is mostly white pixels so it went on to select areas of high of bright pixels so yep if i select blue this blue you can see it's selecting let's try this road and you see selecting areas where it's mostly gray so that's how the magic wand works uh continue checking continuous will simply select areas that are connected pixels that are connected to the selection area so it won't it won't select other pixels that are not connected to that area and checking it will select any pixel that matches that color range uh so under that we have the quick selection uh it also works uh, like a magic wand but instead it just let's first make unselect so to unselect any selection you can go under select in your top menu and then deselect you can also select the inverse of your selection say we make as uh, an elliptical selection we can select the inverse of that selection or you can use the shortcut control shift i sorry yes undo control shift i to make an inverse selection control shift i then uh, we have the uh, we have the crop tool uh, you can use this to crop your image after you get the crop you the crop you want you can hit enter or click on this tick to confirm your crop i'll undo so i'll just go under edit and do crop then we have from that we looked at the brush area the brush tool sorry and then we have let's see let's see we have this patch have this patch tool it has a lot of uh, options but we look at mostly this patch tool so the way it works you make a selection uh let's see can this work for us can this work for us uh say you wanted to get rid of this cloud here and you want it to be uh, a more like a gradient like here so you can select part the part you want say this and then move your selection to the area you want to copy and then it will patch that area uh, maybe this is not the best image to use so okay, you can see how it copied this yeah it's simply a copying tool so i can also bring this image this part of the city and move it say sorry now i'm moving this area to this area as you see it moved these buildings so i can copy a bunch of these towers this building a few times ah uh, no sorry <laughs> the way it works it makes the selection you want to replace so I if i want to move this here I to copy this here i just make a selection from here and then get this city a bunch so i can make multiple towers it even tries to match the surrounding areas to feed this image the uh, other image the, is the other parts of the image so i can make multiple towers so if i wanted to add another tower here i can just make a selection move and get it there so you see how we cloned it's like a clone tool but uh, we also have a clone tool it's also uh let's see where is it so after the patch tool we have we looked at the brush tool let's look at the clone tool so the clone tool works like uh, the patch tool but instead of selecting you just use a brush instead so what how it works is uh you get this brush you can increase the size and the hardness or softness the hardness the same options for the clone tool are the same options for the brush tool if you look at this options here uh they are the same as here so if we i want to show you how the hardness works so we have this brush 
and you see the softness of the brush if i increase the hardness you can see it makes very hard strokes so let's go to the clone tool again uh, to to clone say this part of this image you can hold you click the clone tool and then hold down alt click anywhere on the image you want to clone after clicking then you will get the brush so it will be like you cloning part of that image somewhere so if i want to clone this part around here i can hold down hold down out and then click part of that image and then bring here so now i'm able to paint this part around there so that's how the clone tool works uh, we have the eraser which just erases undo we have the gradient if you want to create a new uh, a gradient say i uh, first you want to create a new layer to create a new layer just go in the layers panel and then click on this new layer icon which like which looks like a, a paper and then you will create a new layer so to draw a gradient make sure to click on the gradient and then drag from top to bottom to create a top to bottom gradient or drag uh, so you can see we have different options for the gradient we have the diamond which was selected so if i want to create a top to bottom gradient i uh, you would make sure to, to select make sure to select the first uh, gradient type which is the which is the linear gradient so i uh, will select that uh, if i want to create a left to right gradient i just do that right to left I uh, also have other options you have the radio gradient so and we have this other and uh, we have this I'm not sure how it's called so uh, let's see this okay and then we have diamond gradient uh, so let's look at uh, texts text sorry text uh, so to create text in Photoshop just click on this T and then you will have a text option to write so you can select after creating your text you can increase the font by going under the, these options where you have the list to change the option to change the font uh the font type bold or regular host things other options the font size let's make sure I'm text uh, the color uh, highlight and then change the color uh, if you don't want to use this font option to increase the font just hold on control just click make sure you have the select the layer selected and hold ctrl t and click ctrl t to bring out the transform options now you can drag the edges of the co the corners of the this border to scale uh, the the text uh, you can see to do a uniform scale you can hold down shift and you can get the your uniform scale you can also scale uniformly in, on the x-axis by just uh, dragging this side of the corner and holding down alt or vertical uniform scale you drag the, f the top corner and then hold down alt yeah so after confirming after the scale make sure to click enter or the tick to have that if you want the control the transform controls uh, you can you can click the the move tool and then from the top you have this option show transform option transform controls and you can use them to move scale and rotate the image the text or layer so to scroll to rotate just move your cursor around just near the edges of the of the border of the transform controls and you will get the option to and your cursor will change to this rotation option so after that click ok let's look at layer styles so when you have a layer like this you can double click on it to bring up the layer style dialog 
and uh, you can add things like bevel and bevel and embrose so in the settings if you click on this you can change the size softness up or down smooth or chisel uh pillow embrose uh outer or stroke embrose or let's leave it at that i also have the option to add a stroke see see so this is an inside stroke but you can change it to an outside stroke or center stroke you can also reduce the opacity you can add an inner shadow uh, what photoshop did in earlier in latest in the latest versions or uh, from cc and above you have the option to add multiple styles say you want to add two different shadows inner shadows you can just click the add button say we want this to be red and the blend mode to normal and the opacity that we can move the distance can see uh, this option was not available in diff in the earlier versions of Photoshop but I think it was added in a uh, version sis in the CC versions uh, so if you don't have it uh, it may be because your version is the earlier version nonetheless not among the latest one you can also add a drop shadow so if we take out this uh, Reduce the distance. Oh no! Uh, reduce the size, spread size, and the distance, and this. Uh, uh, can move. See if we have created this, this, the shadow, and click OK. So you can also copy the layer styles to a different layer. Say we have another text, other text okay let's change the color uh, if you click on this icon it gives you other more options for the text layer you can if you if you have paragraphs you can center a line of left or right align you can easily change the canning and leading uh, so if we change this you can see just increases the space between each character uh, if we have multiple lines of text okay, let's decrease the size you can reduce the space between that text let's change the text again the color and now you can copy the font style these the layer styles from this layer to this layer you can simply hold down alt and then drag this fx icon to the new layer or simply let's or to clear the layer styles you can right click and then you see this drop down these options and you can clear the layer styles you can also copy a layer style by right clicking on the layer and then you get copy layer style and now you can paste it the other layer so to export this image you have two options you can go under file and then save us which will give you this box this pop-up box and you have a bunch of options PSD is the Photoshop document type so it will preserve the layer styles and editing and the layers themselves uh, but you can save uh, PNG JPEG PDF and other stuff but if you want to compress your image so that it's not a large file you can go under file and uh, find quick export as png i think it has already saved or go under uh it's called save for web so let's see this where is it uh and click save for web it will bring up this uh, this box where you have a lot of options like you can change the format the type of image you want to export if you have animation in your image 
you can change it from GIF to you can save it as a GIF or JPEG, PNG, or uh, Web BPM, and uh, yeah. So you can also change the decompression. This is very good for saving images that you're going to use to on your website. Uh, so you can see the size of the image now is very compressed, and you can also change the dim the output the output size of your image so after getting the size you want the uh, this has lost a lot of quality so i'll just change from low to maximum to preserve some of the quality and then save so that's the basics of photoshop in one video so if you like the video make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and see you in the next video